everybody a very good evening to all of you and a warm welcome to PSTV live i am sapna mahadevan your host for this evening here and i hope you're all having a fun weekend a lovely time spent with family and friends do let me know in the chat box um how you all are planning to spend your uh, evening today what are the different things that you have done today maybe and also if your day has been productive until now and any other thoughts that you would want to share with me please do write to me in the chat box here and uh, let's stir up a conversation let's talk to each other know each other better right uh, thanks a lot for all of those thumbs ups and emojis and those hello messages there um and as usual i'm doing really great how do i look um, do let me know in the chat box how has your day been kanchi kakkar thanks a lot for that like there and uh, with that let's move ahead to our first introductory slide here and i'm hoping to have a participative audience for today as well and i'm hoping that you're all going to have a wonderful conversation with me in the chat box here yes so balaji learners hello there uh, a warm welcome to today's live and um, here is what we are going to do today as well it is the fiction story writing master class and as always we need to unleash the writer in us and it is a saturday special episode for today which means that today we are going to actually break down a classic story into its various parts and try and understand how we can be writing a similar story all by ourselves yes so we are going to break it down into the title into the essentials that we want in our story and uh, the engaging plot building pointers and also towards the end of our episode for today i am going to recite the story out to you and let me tell you that this is a um, popular classic story which uh, you all might be knowing but it's still going to be interesting to listen out that story from me once again yes so let me also keep checking at my comments here uh good evening balaji is the handle that i am conversing with right now and they are asking me what is a story that's so uh, basic isn't it uh, so we are trying to learn how we can weave a story all by ourselves and what a story is um is maybe um, a sequence of events which are all put together in an interesting way they have compelling characters you have a particular setting that you're going to talk about you have certain situations or problematic statements going in your story and with all of these conflicts you know you can be writing an engaging story for your audiences and once we have the problem also understand that throughout the story the problem is going to keep on intensifying and uh, finally towards the end towards the climax of the story we get to have a resolution right so that's what a story is all about uh, and um, here they're asking me whether we create a story or whether we are going to read a story okay so let me put it in simple terms here um every day i come live at 6 pm india time and i give you various tips and tricks various plot building pointers on how you can be writing a story all by yourself yes but today since it's a saturday special episode i'm going to talk about one particular story and try to um give you all of the uh, pointers from this particular story as to what is the conflict how did the story get resolved and all of this these tips i am going to give you particularly about the story under contention right and uh, finally we'll be also reading that story out yes so that's what is the agenda for today uh yes that is correct balaji and uh, let's move ahead into our episode for today there we are we have the coming up segment and in the coming up segment let me tell you all of the gamut of activities that we have specially curated for our wonderful bunch of viewers here so today we have the introduction of the book 
then all about the title and the author. And then I will be delving deeper into the essentials for our story for today. And we have fun segments where uh, we have a think like a pro segment. I want you all to put on your thinking caps and give me answers to the questions that I post. Right. And apart from that, we have icebreaker questions as always. There is the synonymous segment as well. And of course, the interesting part for today, we have the story in a nutshell. Right. So let's uh, move ahead with our episode with the first icebreaker question for the day. And it says, never have I ever missed a flight. So do let me know if ever by chance you have missed a flight, maybe because of lack of time or uh, maybe because of traffic. Um, do let me know if any time you have had this uh, circumstance where you have missed a flight. Yes, I have never done that. I am really, um, I really see to it that I go well before time uh, whenever I need to reach a destination. That is one. And uh, also luck has always favored me. So never stuck in a traffic jam. And uh, so yes, never missed a flight. Do let me know if you have Anytime missed a flight, Balaji says no. We have no coming up there. Pra Prachi says no as well. And uh, yes, Joseph also says no. So no is the answer that I have here. Uh, great. I am punctual is what Balaji tells me. Great. That's lovely to know. And that's how we should be, right? Great. That is how we should be. Okay. So let's move ahead into the next segment. We have after the icebreaker, what is the book? So let me tell you all about the book that we are going to talk about today. And it is the classic story of the sleeping beauty. Yes, you might have all heard about uh, this classic story. Um, and it is a fairy tale or a folk tale, if you may want to suggest uh, that to be it. And uh, The Sleeping Beauty is one of the favorite bedtime stories that kids love to, you know, read during bedtime, right? And that's what is the choice of book for today. We are going to uh, know all about the essentials, the plot building pointers in this particular story, the characters in the story, and uh, try and um, get inspired through this story here so that we can also write a similar story in on similar lines. Yes. Yes, it is Sleeping Beauty, Balaji. Uh, that is correct. And Kanchi says, um, I'm very punctual. <laughs> That's really funny. Okay, so let me showcase that answer to you. Kanchi says, no, because I am very punctual. That is, she has never missed a flight. But one of these days, she says she might because her husband is not. Yes, so that's that's a, a hilarious one, Kanchi. And um, I hope your husband is not watching this one. Okay, so let's move ahead into the next uh, segment. And we already know that the book is The Sleeping Beauty. And now what does the title suggest, right? So as we know from this title, The Sleeping Beauty, it only means to say that the story is about a beauty and that's a beautiful princess who is somehow spelled to sleep, right? That's what the story is all about. And let me move ahead and tell you, okay, before I reveal who the author is, here is another icebreaker question. The question is, never have I ever been on an aeroplane? That's the next question that we have here. So we first asked whether you have missed a flight. And now we have a question whether you have been on an aeroplane. And I think it's quite common these days, right? So I know what is the answer that I'm going to get here. I have, of course. Great. So we all have been in an aeroplane, right? Okay. Um, just another means of transport. It's nothing great in that isn't it but but i for one um i definitely love train travels rather than uh taking a flight maybe because i don't like uh the the stomach rumbling feeling when the plane uh takes off or it lands yes so i'm not a fan of um uh, going by flight uh no is what Bala balaji tells me here great so lovely to know all of your answers here um and yes with that let me quickly move ahead to who the author is, right? So Charles Perrault is the author for the book that we have for today, which is um, Sleeping Beauty. And uh, let me also <clears throat> let me also tell you something about Charles Perrault here. He is an iconic French author, and he is, uh, you know, recognized with writing a lot of 
uh, fairy tales, right? And these are also maybe these could also be derived from earlier folk tales, right? So that's how we know this particular author here, uh, Charles Perrault, the author of Sleeping Beauty, right? And uh, some of the popular stories that we can also attribute to him um, would be one in 1697, he published Tales and Stories of the Past with uh, Morals and some of his other popular stories, particularly Cinderella and uh, the one that we are having for today, which is Sleeping Beauty. These are, again, commonly told similar to the way Perol had written them, while, um, you know, others, some of his other uh, writings, they have been revised over the years. For example, some versions of Sleeping Beauty published today are based partially on a Brothers Grimm tale, which was called Little Briar Rose and a modified version of the Perol story, right? So there might be some variations in the story here, but uh, Sleeping Beauty, as we know it, is uh, the one that is written by Charles Perrault. Um, okay, so uh, Balaji tells me that it is boring to learn about the author. Uh, Balaji, but uh, I should tell you that we definitely need to know about who has um, written the story, what is the origin of that story, and we get to know a lot of uh, these tiny little nuances from knowing about the origin, the folk tale from which these stories have been inspired, right? It is um, such a wealth of information that we have here, right? So it is, uh, we definitely need to know all our famous stories, who are they written by, yes? So that is one of uh, the information that I have here, who is the author. And now let me move ahead into the next segment. And this is uh, about what the genre is, right? So now you know the story is The Sleeping Beauty. So let me know uh, in the chat box, can you guess in 60 seconds flat, which is the genre that we are talking about? So what is the category into which you can be putting or categorizing uh, Sleeping Beauty into? That is the question that we have here. <clears throat> and uh, yes, that's right. It is a uh, fairy tale. That is correct. It has a lot of magical elements. And uh, fantasy is also correct. Yes, Sushma, thanks a lot for that answer there. Uh, fantasy is right because we have a lot of fantastical elements there, elements which uh, cannot happen or unlikely to happen in the real world, right? So the genre here is um, fairy tale or it can also be categorized as children's literature and also as for fantasy yes so uh, Balaji tells me it can be magical fantasy of course that's one of the modern names that we give to a genre and yes it can be also categorized as a magical fantasy yes so let's move ahead into our next icebreaker question and the question is never have I ever sang karaoke right so do let me know if you have ever attempted to sing karaoke and uh, that is where you have the lyrics you have the background music playing and you try to uh, match uh, the song with the music and uh, the lyrics that you see on the screen right so have you ever tried uh, singing on a karaoke do let me know that i have tried it a couple of times um, and yes, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Okay, so no is the answer that I get here. Um, interesting. Yes, of course it is. Um, and uh, okay, Sushma tells me yes. Balaji also says yes. So lovely. Thanks again for all of these answers and for being a participative audience here on a weekend. Um, coming in here to join my live and having the will to learn. That's a big uh, thumbs up from me to all of my dear viewers. Yes. So let's move ahead into the next uh, segment that we have here, which is um, all about the essentials, right? So in Sleeping Beauty, the story, what are the essentials? If you want to write a story just like this one, which is a fairy tale or a magical fantasy, then what are the essentials that you should be looking out for? So let me tell you here in this story, we have three essentials that we would want to point out. The number one is the protagonist. And we also have uh, an antagonist here, which is the villain of our story. And of course, they are going to have a clash of interest with the protagonist. And the third element that we have here is the power of true love, right? So that's the third element. So let's look at each of these elements in greater detail. 
the first one is all about the protagonist so let me tell you there are two central protagonists in the story one of them is prince aurora and the other one is uh, prince philip right so princess aurora and prince philip are the two important characters the protagonist for our story and they lived uh, in their kingdoms peacefully princess aurora was a calm person she was a beautiful soul and prince philip was charming and handsome and he was brave and uh, he was ever ready to fight for his princess right so that's something about the protagonist here and now the antagonist uh, the main antagonist in this story the sleeping beauty is a witch who is named maleficent and she lives in a nearby forest now she was powerful and she could do magic over um, anything or over anyone and uh, this was one power that uh, she used to her advantage uh, but in a bad sort of a way yes so she had a cunning crow uh, who also acted as her companion and uh, always in the story we see that she did dark magic on the spinning wheel or which is also called the spindle and uh, she could make princess aurora fall asleep for her whole life and uh, why she did that was because she wanted to take revenge on princess aurora's father the king yes so that's about the antagonist here and this is also one of the essentials in a fairy tale story we have protagonist we have an antagonist who is um putting in some kind of an obstacle or a hurdle in the path of uh, the protagonist, right? Now, the third element that we have here is the power of true love, right? So the story here is based on uh, this power of true love. And we see in the story that in spite of all the different conflicts that are happening, true love between the Prince uh, Philip and uh, between Princess Aurora, it breaks all the dark magic and... Uh, the princess she gets to wake up from her deep sleep and finally they get to live happily ever after right so there is a happy resolution to the story just like in any other uh, fairy tale and with fairy tales uh, the last line a happily ever after is really synonymous isn't it so even in this story one of the crucial essentials is the power of true love and we are going to see while um, we go to the um, segment where we are going to see the story in a nutshell we are going to um every see uh, for ourselves how the power of true love actually wins over uh all of these uh, uh bad uh, uh i can say the antagonist or the bad deeds yes all of this gets vanquished right so that that is what is the power of true love that we see uh, as one of the other essentials in the story and now after all of these essentials let's move ahead to the first synonymic word for today which is struck right so the word struck would also have synonyms hit point or reach right so these are the words here uh, and the past tense for reach would be reached right so that's uh, the first synonymic word for today struck and now let's move ahead uh, to the next icebreaker question and the question is never have i ever seen a chihuahua right that's the next question and if you're wondering what a chihuahua is then let me tell you it is the name of a dog breed and uh, these are really cute uh, dogs um, and the question that we have in our icebreaker is is whether you have ever seen a chihuahua yes so do let me know in the chat box if you have seen one and if you like to have dogs as pets um, do give me a shout out here in the chat box um, and uh, let me see all all the answers that we have here yay is the comment that i get here from prisha and uh, hi fi to you prisha i am of the same opinion uh, pets are really special right and uh, i have seen a chihuahua that's great okay love that breed great um yes so we have we are uh, we do know what a chihuahua is so let's move ahead into the next segment after that fun icebreaker question and here is my think like a pro segment for all of my wonderful viewers right so uh in the think like a pro segment you need to put on your thinking caps and i'm going to show you some pictures uh and what you need to be doing here is try guessing these famous food items from around the world right and uh, your mouth is definitely going to water with them here is the first one that i have 
for this segment and let me know in the chat box what is that maybe you can also mention the country out to me <clears throat> pizza says varun that is correct it is from italy and then we have the next one here okay so that looks really tempting what is that it is tea time and uh, seeing all these pictures here um <laughs> great um and yes that's correct it is a samosa and that's from india that is again a deep fried um evening snack item which i really love and uh, now for the third picture for the day there it is can you guess what this picture is all about okay so let me reveal the answer out to you that is from france that a tui and now let's move ahead to the next one here it is that is correct it is a burger and more specifically there we have it hamburger from america and this is the last picture for the day that's again become quite popular all of these cuisines have become popular around the world right and uh, anushka that's correct it is of course sushi from japan right now let's move ahead to the plot building pointers we already saw what the essentials were for our story the sleeping beauty and now the plot building pointers we have the conflict there is the resolution that's what's the uh, climax of the story and finally also a moral so a fairy tale without a moral you have you might have never seen that yes so we always have a moral which gives us a meaningful insight to the story and uh, that's what we are going to see next so we have the conflict the resolution and the moral so let's me talk about the first element which is the conflict right so in this story we had an antagonist who was the witch she was really evil and she curses princess aurora at birth to die on her 16th birthday to be very precise right and how she was uh, supposed to die was by pricking her finger on a spinning wheel yes now three good fairies they try to help princess aurora avoid this fate by altering the curse's effect and hiding her in a forest under the assumed name of briar rose yes that's how the story progresses and this is one particular conflict the antagonist which is the evil witch maleficent she is the one who curses princess aurora to a deep spell and now the second element that we have here is the resolution right so towards the end we see how prince philip uh with the the charming prince that he was he with the help of the little fairies he um successfully fights against the evil witch and defeats her and uh, finally we get to see that he goes towards the castle to aurora uh, and kisses her before midnight that is uh, the power of true love that we see here in the story and this uh, action breaks the magic spell and a miracle is witnessed right so princess aurora she gets up from her deep sleep and the prince and the princess live happily ever after that's the final resolution of the story and it is always uh, on a happy note that we see fairy tales ending right so this was how uh, the sleeping beauty had its ending and now the third element that we have here as one of the important aspects in plotting the plot is the moral of the story right so all the different morals that we can garner from this story are uh, one is true love conquers everything and second is pure goodwill vanquishes the pure evil and uh, of course home is where the heart is that's again the moral of our story here and uh, i get a like there from uh, christina topo uh, i hope i'm pronouncing your name right uh, thanks a lot for that love emoji christina and uh, let's move ahead after these plot building pointers to the next a uh, synonymic word that we have for today which is vanquish right so the word vanquish has synonyms conquer to beat or trounce that means to conquer over something right uh, so this these are the synonyms for the word vanquish and that could be used in uh, you know instead of one another 
And uh, you can also check out for the meaning of the word in Google and try writing all of these words down in one uh, place. Maybe you can call that your fancy Google journal, just like the way I love to call that, right? And uh, this is going to help you a lot with your vocabulary and your words formation. And you can always have better effective words for communication, right? So that's the second word in our synonymous segment, which is vanquish. And now we have next is quiz time coming up. So you need to be really um, alert here and give me answers to the question. So if you have been listening out to me intently uh, during the plot building pointers and the essentials, and if you already know the story of the Sleeping Beauty, then you're going to give me correct answers in the chat box. And I'm going to wait for your answers here, right? So this is the first question in uh, the segment here. Where did Princess Aurora live? That's the first question. So uh, quickly in the chat box, you can give me the answers. And uh, um, yes, that is correct. Vani giving me the correct answer. She lived in the castle. And now let's move ahead to the next question. There we are. What did Princess Aurora touch? That's, that's the next question in our quiz time. The spinning wheel, that is correct. So she was supposed to touch the spinning wheel and that's what, uh, you know, would make her die on her 16th birthday, right? Now, the third question, who cursed Princess Aurora into sleep? That's quite an easy one. That is correct. It was the witch, Maleficent. And uh, then let's move ahead into the next uh, segment. Here we are. Okay, so we are already through all of these segments here and we come to the most interesting part for today's episode, which is the story in a nutshell, right? And the first theme that we see playing here is, uh, here it is, patience is key. That is the first theme for our story. And let me tell you all about the story here. We also have interesting pictures that go along with the story. So in this story, a narrator um, introduces King Stephen and his unnamed wife, who finally have a child after years of longing for one. Well-wishers from all, all over Stephen's peaceful kingdom, they come uh, and uh, to you know give congratulatory messages to the king and the queen and they deliver gifts and celebrate the birth of the newborn now stephen is a tall thin black bearded king and he invites king hubert a short round gray bearded king from the adjacent kingdom also to the celebration the two kings they have uh, planned a happy merger of sorts and they are going to merge their lands together yes so um, they are having fun at this celebration here. And as part of the festivities, Hubert's young son, who is named Prince Philip, uh, is betrothed to the infant princess Aurora, right? So they already have a connection while Princess Aurora was an infant. And three pleasant um, grandmotherly fairies from the forest, they arrive to bestow gifts uh, to the newborn baby. Now, Flora is one of the fairies here and she delivers the gift of beauty to the newborn and fauna one of the other uh, fairies she gives gifts the gift of song to princess aurora right now but before the fiesty little meriwether fairy can present uh, her gift to the newborn the evil witch appears in a rush of uh, wind like structure and she has a bitter response and she wants to take revenge from Princess Aurora's father, King Stephen, because he did not call her uh, for the celebrations, right? So having this particular revenge in mind, what she does is she actually curses Princess Aurora. She declares that the princess will prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel on her 16th birthday, right? And she then disappears into thin air, but um, the go fairy godmother, uh, Meriwether, she actually is not able to reverse the curse, but what she is able to do best is that, you know, she can re 
she tries to change the curse and uh, its effects and now uh, instead of instead of dying the curse changes uh, to um, one where princess aurora is will be pricking her finger on a spinning wheel on her 16th birthday but instead of dying she will go into a deep sleep instead yes so that's what meriwether the fairy uh, tries to do with her wand and the princess um, she also has an uh, meriwether the god god fairy mother she also has another particular uh, condition here which is that um, princess aurora can actually be wakened from her deep sleep uh, if uh, you know she can be given uh, the kiss of love right so that's the condition that fairy godmother has for uh, baby aurora and uh, hereby we see that this particular celebration it turns um, and has a different turn of events right now this is how the story starts so prince philip is already betrothed to the infant princess aurora and now um, we can understand how distraught king stephen would be because of all of uh, the turn of events that happened right now what he does is he orders a bonfire of all the spinning wheels in the kingdom so that uh, during six, the 16th birthday of uh, sleeping beauty uh, the, there is not a chance as well where she can prick her finger right so he tries to have a bonfire of all the spinning wheels in the kingdom attempting to circumvent the evil which is powerful curse saddened he also allows the three fairies to take aurora away from the kingdom into a forest and hide her there uh, and they were supposed to raise her without their magic as mortal peasants so they rename her briar rose and rose wanders bare through barefoot through the forest and she already has the gift of uh, song and the gift of beauty because of flora's and fauna's wishes and uh, with all of these uh, gifts she hums a mesmerizing tune all throughout the forest and the animals are also actually uh, you know um, really in a trance with uh, sleeping beauty which is uh, the pr princess aurora here yes now one fine day uh, her soulful voice also mesmerizes a distant horse rider who convinces his tired white steed samson to search for its source now rose stops singing to tell the animals about a vivid dream that she has seen and um, when she is telling about this vivid dream um, what happens side by side is uh, the prince who was on this white horse who was trotting nearby he actually fell into uh, a stream which was nearby and because of his horse's urgency and a chipmunk notices that his cape and his hat and all of his um, attire is actually hanging out nearby to dry now when this when this chipmunk sees all of this attire there hanging out to dry he quickly takes all of his clothes and humorously simulates the dream that princess aurora had seen and with all of these events happening nearby in the forest it is re really a humorous sight to watch out for all the animals trying to uh, imbibe uh, the princess aurora's uh, vivid dream and uh, they are doing this with uh, wearing the prince philip's attire that he has kept there to hang out to dry right now this is how the story progresses further and uh, before we move ahead into the next part of the story let's look at one of the synonymic words which is congenial right so congenial would mean um, compatible or kind or even pleasing so these are the synonyms for the word congenial and you can also jot these words down you can of course you know the meaning of the word by see looking at some of its synonyms which are pleasing and kind right so do jot down this word here in your google it journal and uh, let's look at what is uh, the theme number two right so the first theme was a theme of patience and now the theme two is that true love conquers all so what happens next is what we are going to see in our story here is again uh, we need to uh, again try and recollect what happened in our uh, last part of our story right so 
we saw that how Prince Philip had fallen into a stream and all of the um, animals, they had taken his uh, attire, his hat and his boots, and they were trying to imbibe a scene from the vivid dream that Princess Aurora had seen, right? Now, playing along good-naturedly, Rose also dances with her forest friends, and she is sweetly singing the Sleeping Beauty classic song, Once Upon a Dream. And midway through the dance, the mysterious rider, that is none other than Prince Philip, he finds his clothes and cuts in seamlessly dancing and singing along with a shocked Rose. So Rose has already always been given a warning that she should not be talking to strangers. And because of this, she tries to flee from that place. The nameless rider asks for her name. Flustered, she actually doesn't reveal her name, but she definitely uh, yelps out and manages to give an invitation to the prince to come to her cottage that night, right? Now, both of them do not know each other's identity, sorry, identity till now. And uh, let's see what happens next here. Sleeping Beauty is the story that we are seeing, right? Now, at night, back at the cottage, the bumbling and nitpicky fairies they also come to know of this particular um, event happening and uh, now they want um, the uh, they want princess aurora to look her best uh, while prince philip visits her uh, at night in the cottage right so they try to bake a cake they try to make some delicious dishes they also want prince aurora to look her best so um, even when they are trying to do all of these things the, the cake is not baking well and uh, they finally realize that for once they would have to actually uh, forego uh, the condition that they had talked about to the king and uh, they think of using the magic wand, right? And next what we see here is So I think I am back up again. Great. Yes. So thanks for letting me know. Okay. So, so yes, we were talking about the story where uh, uh, the fairies are trying to bake a wonderful cake and they are also trying to, uh, you know, make Prince Aurora look her best because Prince Philip, it's such an important occasion that Prince Philip is actually coming to meet her, right? So they make one exception to their no magic rule and they use their magic wand. And he watches Rose uh, return into a new woman. She's gaily dancing and singing and she's clearly in love. And the fairies are also forced to tell the truth of her life that she's actually a princess who is already betrothed to the Prince Philip. Uh, and this turn of event actually uh, devastates Rose because she had no inkling of all of these events and she never knew that she was a princess and she flees in tears to her room, right? But all's well that ends well and later, just a second. And uh, as I was telling you, all's well that ends well and later we come to know that Hubert, the the king whom, um, who is the father of Prince Philip, he reveals that Philip met his peasant girl once upon a dream. And he says that what luck it is that Philip and Aurora are already in love, but they just don't know it. So um, Philip can break the evil which is cursed with a kiss. So the fairies regroup and they fly back to the cottage. And however, we see that the witch here uh, and her henchmen have already captured Philip. Now, expecting a peasant boy, Maleficent is overjoyed at her luck and she steals the prince away. Finding only Philip's hat at their cottage, the fairies, they sneak into the evil witch's castle and the evil witch taunts Philip 
revealing the identity of his true love, but refusing to release him to her for 100 years. That's such a long time, isn't it? Now, the fairies, they sneak in when Maleficent finally goes to bed and they zap open the chains that bind Philip and arm him with a shield of virtue and a sword of truth. An army of one with three helpers, Philip must navigate a brutal path to return to his true love. First, Maleficent's castle crumbles and it goes up in flames around him. And then she makes a forest of thorns grow in front of uh, Stephen's castle. Finally, she turns herself into a dragon to stop him. But again, Philip brandishes the sword of truth and slays her with one thrust. Now, Philip awakes Aurora with a kiss and the castle band launches into the beautiful song Once Upon a Dream. As the couple dance into the clouds, Flora and Meriwether, they resume arguing over Aurora's dress, which changes from pink to blue over and over again until the storybook closes and we get to the end where Prince Philip and Princess Aurora live happily ever after, right? So that was a lovely story. That was a big one, but uh, it was really a story which gave us the message of love and that love can vanquish and conquer uh, all of the other uh, emotions and all of the other evils, right? So that is what the story, The Sleeping Beauty is all about. I hope you all had fun listening out to this story here. And uh, we have another handle uh, joining my live here. Mm. Okay, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to pronounce that name there. I'm so sorry. Do excuse me for that. Um, and yes, a very warm welcome to our live here. So yes, that was the story that we had. And let's now move back to another synonymic word, which is brandish. Wigzol gaming. Okay, thanks a lot for that help there. And uh, yes, so the synonymic word... The next one that we have is brandish and the word brandish would have synonyms wave, shake or raise, right? Now, uh, moving ahead, we have another fun segment in our episode for today, which is the jumbled words. And what you need to be doing is try to unjumble the letters and give me a meaningful word. All the words would be related to today's episode. Yes. So here is the first word for today. Um, you can try giving me the meaningful word there. Okay. That is correct. There's again a glitch here. We don't have, okay. Maybe you can try solving this jumbled word here. Yes, that is correct. It is love. And uh, this one, the previous one that I showed you, that was right. It was forest. F-O-R-E-S-T, that is correct. And let's move ahead. We did the love and here is the next word for our jumbled up segment. Um, Vigzol Gaming, you are right. Love is the correct answer. And what is this word here that you can see? And that is correct again. It is curse. There we go. So thanks again for attempting to give me answers here in the chat box. Those were correct answers. And with that, we come to the end of our episode for today. I hope you had as much fun as I had in bringing this episode out to you. Before we leave for the day, I have a project work and I strongly encourage all of my viewers to try implementing the learnings from today's episode and write a book which is inspired by the Sleeping Beauty. Yes. Uh, that was not rescue. It was a five-letter word, which was curse, right? Um, so, yes, uh, with that, we come to the end of our episode for today. 
I'll be meeting you next on Monday with a fantasy genre. And until the time I meet you next, I want all of you to take good care of yourselves. Have a happy time and keep smiling. Bye-bye.